So this video is primarily a preview of our fourth class, but its essential content are the main equations that are going to be using all semester and applied as we do the material from the section four of chapter two and into chapter three of the textbook. There are five equations of motion for constant acceleration that I expect you to know and start all of your problems from these equations. In order that you should learn them, there are 2, 7, and 2, 10, which are equations that we use for projectile motion, projectile motion in two dimensions, and for many other problems. The other two equations from chapter 2 are variations and combinations of those equations that allow us to attack certain kinds of problems. And the final equation is from chapter 3 and is the equation for uniform circular motion. Uh, these can also be used as a cue to remember other things like the definition of average velocity and some of the other equations that we use in this course. The first one is one that you've already seen. It's the equation for constant acceleration with the velocity as a function of time. It's the equation of a straight line. Uh, v of t is, of course, the derivative, the slope, of x of t. It's a function that gives us the instantaneous velocity at any particular time. V naught, as it's pronounced, is V at t equals zero, the initial velocity. The A is the constant value of the acceleration function. It's some number. The second equation is the fun equation that's the function X of t, which you'll notice is a quadratic equation. Notice in particular the one half that always goes with the t squared. Those of you who had calculus will immediately recognize that this is an equation directly related to v of t. This equation is the integral of v of t, and the derivative of this equation gives you the velocity. Uh, those of you who have not had calculus or learned all of this in calculus uh, should merely learn this equation, but notice in particular that one half goes with the square. x of t is again a function. It gives us the instantaneous position at a particular time x naught is the position at t equals zero, v naught is the velocity at t equals zero, and a is some numerical constant like g, the acceleration of gravity, that we'll use to be 9.80 meters per second squared. If you go from that equation and eliminate the time by solving v uh, for t from the velocity equation and substitute it into the other equation, you can eliminate the time and get this equation, which says that the velocity at time t can be attained from the velocity at time t equals zero if you know the initial and final positions and the acceleration. But notice, because of the square in this equation, it cannot give you the sign, the S-I-G-N sign of the velocity. It can only give you the magnitude of the velocity. It is, however, a very powerful equation for any problem where you don't know what time it took for something to happen. It's also written this way where you can see very clearly the identification that the v2 is associated with the x2, that is, they both have to be at the same time, and v1 is associated with x1, that is, a velocity at, one at that time and the position at that time. The fourth equation is a version of our original equation 2.1 but for the special case of constant acceleration where we know the average velocity is the mean of the initial and final velocities. I always write it as v naught v1 plus v2 so that I don't make any mistakes involving a plus or minus sign. This is, uh, I guess they say, just 2.1 at the top. That first equation is always true, but the second equation is only true for constant acceleration. So you need to be careful when you use this equation and be sure that it applies to the problem that you're doing. And the fifth one for circular motion is uh, the acceleration is v squared, the constant speed of an object moving in a circle, divided by the radius of that circle. Uh, this is only constant in magnitude. This acceleration vector changes direction, but its magnitude does not change. The vector always points towards the center of the circle. I recommend learning the equations in this order and starting every problem you do in the homework and on exams from one of these five equations. You should be able to derive other equations from these, but don't remember, memorize, equation grab some particular equation. I also want to do a quick review of the things that were uh, did earlier that leads to all of this. 
uh, especially concerning equation 2.1, because as a definition of average velocity, uh, it's something that we use in the lab. It's also the basis for defining the derivative that, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, position function that gives us the instantaneous velocity and several other things that we use regularly in this class. I'm going to go through this rather quickly. So v average is delta x over delta t. Uh, the difference in position, difference in position divided by the difference in time. And you can rewrite that several different ways. The acceleration is delta v over delta t. If the acceleration is constant, that average acceleration is just some number a, and we can solve that for velocity. If it's not constant, then you have to calculate the acceler instantaneous acceleration from the derivative of the velocity. But for what we're doing, the, uh, that derivative is just the slope of the velocity function a, and so you get these simple equations. The instantaneous velocity is the limit as delta t goes to 0. So it's the derivative, which you may know as x prime of t, but that we prefer to call dx dt. Uh, dx dt looks just like delta x over delta t. So it's a very familiar idea that when you take the limit of one thing, you get the other. In the lab, we'll use the average velocity to estimate, to approximate the instantaneous velocity at the midpoint of an interval. You'll get more about that in the lab. As I said, you need to know one version of these equations really well, be able to construct the other versions, and always start from one of these equations.